Seminyak is one of Bali's most famous tourist areas. Like everywhere else, COVID hit hard. Now that tourism is starting to recover, is Seminyak worth staying? We're gonna share our top pros and cons so you can decide for yourself. So we spent a long time in Seminyak. When we just arrived, it was our first destination. And for the first two months, we've been living in this area. We've been living in two different neighborhoods of this beautiful town. And Seminyak is located perfectly. It's right in the west of Bali, near to the beautiful beach and close to everything. So when we first arrived, the area was completely dead because you needed to jump a lot of hoops to get here and the quarantine was still in place. That's why a lot of businesses were still closed. It was very tragic for locals because tourism is 80% of the income here in Bali, but it was kind of good, good on us because in some uh, great cafes and restaurants, we were just alone and we didn't even think of before about making reservations to go somewhere, which we do now and highly recommend you to do the same because some of the popular places are completely packed. Which brings us to our first pro. Seminyak has some of the best cafes and restaurants in all of Bali. Our favorites are here and there's lots of great Western food options. From Mexican to seafood and cafes with amazing breakfast, you will find your perfect breakfast spot. This is great for local businesses because businesses are blooming, people are coming and they have more and more customers which kind of brings us to our first con, the traffic. Traffic here is not great. It's very busy, very narrow roads, and it's packed with cars, bikes, and people walking around. So it can be very hectic to try to get from one point to another, and you might spend hours in traffic, especially if you're inside the car. So get out of the car, grab a bike, bicycle, or just walk. This is not that busy. No. It can be worse. Way worse. Way worse. We've yeah. seen it way worse. Fortunately, you won't have to drive far to enjoy one of Seminyak's biggest pros, Seminyak Beach. Seminyak is a big, beautiful beach. It's on the sunset side and you can just stroll in the evening, enjoy the view. There is a huge variety of cafes and restaurants right on the beach on the bean bags where you can sit, relax, grab a drink and just people watch or enjoy the beautiful sunset or enjoy dogs running around and playing with each other, which is my favorite thing to do. When we were here back in February, the beach was almost empty and it felt like pseudo private because it's a huge beach. It's very long. You can do long walks here and enjoy the, the scenery, the ocean. And right now it's super crowded. So if you're looking for something more private, that's not a place to be, but if you're looking for the long beach with great ocean and a lot of people around and you want to be in the crowd in the center of everything, that's the place to be. Another thing I wanted to say is like the, this beach is great for beginner surfers. You can find a bunch of schools, a bunch of rentals, and it's just sand so you won't be scared to fall on any uh, coral and scratch yourself, so this is really cool. Catching your first wave on the white water is very exciting, but catching your first wave on a small green wave, even better. What I thought's gonna be the end of my world sinking waves. And while you're on the beach, stop and enjoy one of the beach clubs. Seminyak has two of the most popular beach clubs in Bali, Potato Head and Kudata and they're fantastic places to enjoy great food, amazing atmosphere and vibes, and just enjoy the time on the beach. As we mentioned before, the Seminyak is a very walkable place and you can easily spend a day just hopping from one shop to another because shopping areas here are just great. There are a lot of shops there are with uh, unique products, most of them made here in Bali or somewhere else in Indonesia. It just great place to be if you want to shop around. Being a tourist hotspot, it has its own throwback as well because Seminyak is kind of pricey. Although there are a bunch of accommodation options from hostels, hotels, villas, guest houses, they are on a little bit pricier side that you can find in some other neighborhoods here in Bali. For example, when we just arrived, our beautiful villa was only $40 a night because it was COVID prices and low season. 
and right now on official website the price per night is $250. That's you to decide and depending on your budget if you want to stay in this area or not. In addition to the pricier accommodation, Seminyak is also a little bit more expensive on the food budget. All these Western food options are amazing and delicious, but they are on the pricier side. Which leads us to our next con. Seminyak doesn't have very many local food options. Bali is known for its amazing street food and warungs and really nice cheap local food and you're not likely to find it in Seminyak. If you're looking for warungs, you probably better to go to Uta, a legend that's just nearby because in Seminyak you will find western prices in local warungs. If the prices is not an issue for you, Seminyak is place to be. There are a bunch of options for bars, lounge bars, restaurants that open until late and also nightclubs and beach clubs as we mentioned before. They all open until very late and you can enjoy the music, have some fun, have some drinks, dance around. We really like Potato Hat Beach Club so we had amazing times there with lots of locals and lots of tourists from all over the world and drinks great, food is even better than drinks, a beautiful infinity pool, so this would be our recommendation if you want to spend a great night in Seminyak. So those are some of our pros and cons for Seminyak. We do recommend this area, we loved living here while we were here. If you are into more pop-in, more touristy spots, Seminyak is definitely the place to be.